Hi, welcome to our class. We're going to review algebra right now. We're going to be graphing this line by finding the intercepts. We're going to use the graphing tool. You'll see how all that is done. So we have to calculate, of course, so it's always good to have a pen or a pencil and paper. And we're going to be finding intercepts. That is where the line crosses the axes. The easiest, quickest way is just to make a table like this. That way, if x is 0, we find out what y is, and if y is 0, we find out what x is. So let's let x equals 0. All right, that will leave us with negative 4y equals 8. Divide both sides by negative 4. and we'll find out that y is negative 2. So if x is 0, then y is negative 2. This is the y-intercept, where the line crosses the y-axis. You must write these as points. You must write them with parentheses. Now the x-intercept is what you get when y equals 0. So I'll substitute 0 for y in the original equation. So x minus 0 equals 8, otherwise known as x equals 8. So if y is 0, x is 8 and that's where the line crosses the x-axis. Now, let's graph this. I'm going to click on the magnifying glass icon and click on ma uh, uh, medium. I'm going to click on the line tool. I'm going to find 0, negative 2 and then 8, 0. I click on those, save the line, check my answer, and we were correct. Moving along. This time we're going to use a graphing calculator, and we're being told how to set it up. To go to table start, set that at negative 3, and set the change in the x-coordinates to be 1 and we're going to be graphing y equals negative x squared plus 2. So, I'll use my calculator. I'm going to go to second window. Table start is there at the top. I'll set it to negative 3. And the change in the x coordinates called delta table is already set to 1. That's the default. Okay. Now I go back to y equals and I enter negative x squared plus 2. I can graph it if I want to. It's not really necessary for what we're doing right now, but that's what it looks like. What I want is points. So I'm going to get second graph while my cat cries. She wants attention, but you're getting my attention. All right, look, the points are already there for us. If x is negative 3, y is negative 7. If x is negative 2, y is negative 2. If x is negative 1, y is 1. Those are three points. Check the answer. Brilliantly. We did brilliantly. Now, 
we need to choose a graph. And of course, that's the graph that looks just like the graph in the graphing calculator. And we made the right choice. Remember domain. Let's review domain. The fundamental definitions of domain and range are these. The domain consists of the set of all the x-coordinates without repetition. So let's list them here. Each x-coordinate, 9, comma, 18, comma, 41, another 9, but I don't have to list it again, and 47. That's the domain of our function that consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. Now the range. The range is the set of all the y-coordinates without repetition. So I'll list those. 3, negative 4. I don't have to list the next 3. 0. And then I don't have to list the second 0. Is this a function? No, it's not. Whenever you have repetition of the x-coordinates, you don't have a function, at least not most of the time. There might be an exception. I sure can't think of it. Yep, repetition of 9. So no, this is not a function. Now we're going to evaluate a function for different numbers and expressions. For g of 6, we're going to substitute 6 for all the x's. That will give us 6 over 9. No, it won't. It will give us 5 over 9. In B, we'll find g of 1, so we're going to substitute 1 for every x. We'll have 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 3. That'll be 0 over 4, which is 0. C, g of negative 3. We substitute a negative 3 for every x. That will give us negative 4 over 0, which is terrible. You can't have a 0 on the denominator. This is undefined. Now, let's see. We're going to find d, which is going to be g of negative 18.75. What a number. We're going to plug negative 18.75 in for all the x's. And that will give us negative 19.75 over negative 15.75. After which I say thank goodness for calculators. This is the free Wabbit Moo calculator and there's a link in your blackboard. So we'll say negative 19.75 divided by negative 15.75 and the answer is well I'm going to math frac this there I go math enter enter and our answer is 79 over 63 now E E 
is an expression. We're going to substitute x plus h for every x. That will give us x plus h minus 1 over x plus h plus 3. And we're done calculating. So let's start entering our answers in the answer boxes. g of 6 is 5 ninths, so be sure to use the fraction tool. Makes life a little easier. Check answer. We're right. Now, g of 1 equals 0. We're right. g of negative 3 is undefined, does not exist. Same meaning. g of negative 18.75 is 79 over 63. And g of x plus h equals the fraction x plus h minus 1 over x plus h plus 3. Check answer. Fantastic. Okay, now this is uh, uh, going to be very educational. F of negative 4 is the y coordinate that goes with the point on the graph at negative 4. So if you go to x equals negative 4, come down to the point, you'll find the y coordinate is negative 6. Yeah, definitely need to make it bigger. Now, f of negative 3. Go to x equals negative 3. Go down to the graph, find the point, and find the y coordinate. It's negative 2. Now, f of negative 2 has the same y-coordinate, negative 2. This is a piecewise defined function. You haven't learned about that yet, but you will. However, we're just looking at this, and we're trying to decide, is this a function? All right, if, if either of those dots were open, it would mean that the x-coordinate doesn't go to that y-coordinate, but they're both filled. So what you have is one point directly over the other, which means we do not have a function. Come on already. I did that. I wanted to make sure you understood. Just say no. Very good. I irritate myself sometimes. All right, we're going to talk about the domain of this rational function. What you do is you set the denominator equal to 0, solve for x, and those are the numbers that will cause the rational um, uh, function to be undefined because those will be the numbers that make the denominator equal zero. 
So we have to take those out of the domain. You'll see. All right, we're going to set x squared plus 12x plus 27 equal to 0 and solve. Now this is factorable, so I'm going to factor. However, if you want to use the quadratic formula, you can also do that. I prefer to factor when I can because it's so much faster. And you're less likely to make an arithmetic mistake. All right, so x is going to equal negative 9, and x is going to equal negative 3. Once we solve them, shouldn't have jumped ahead. Now, those two numbers have to be removed from the domain. And B says that. All x such that x does not equal negative 3 and x does not equal negative 9. B is our answer. Let's check it out. Aha, we're right.